What was Boeing famous for? Well, it's such a legacy company with 100 years of history. A state industrial giant known for building the safest, most advanced planes in the sky. That's exactly what NASA thought when they favored Boeing over SpaceX by awarding the company a larger, valuable contract under the commercial crew program. And in theory, Boeing showed NASA they were right. The Starliner CST-100 spacecraft developed by Boeing under CCP is a great combination of the technology inherited from its predecessors and advanced achievements of the 21st century. All of this seemed to reinforce NASA's firm belief that somehow Boeing Starliner is better than SpaceX Crew Dragon. Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. A decade ago, NASA awarded SpaceX and Boeing with funding to build spacecraft that the agency could use to get its astronauts to the International Space Station. Clearly, when reading the full contract, you can see the significant differences between the contract value awarded for both. According to the 2019 report of NASA's Office of Inspector General and the contract, Boeing got about $4.8 billion, and the estimated average cost per Starliner seat is approximately $90 million. Meanwhile, those numbers for SpaceX's Crew Dragon are respectively $3.1 billion and $55 million. The reason given for this gap is that Boeing had the advantage of having a long history of working with NASA, a long history with the shuttle program and knowing how to do these kinds of spacecraft. By contrast, SpaceX was new to the game. It makes sense for the government space agency to spend less concentration on a new startup like SpaceX by then because in the aerospace industry, experience plays a vital role. To be fair, at this point, the next generation cannot surpass Boeing. It explains why Starliner has some strengths of its own when compared to SpaceX Dragon. First of all, CST-100 goes over Dragon in the flexible ability to land. Boeing's spacecraft can land on land or even water in emergency cases. Without sea state constraints like wave height, swells, currents, and surface winds, passengers are able to step right out of the spacecraft onto dry land. In 2019, when Starliner's first flight test ended, after spending two days in orbit and successfully checking off a number of flight test objectives, it became the first American orbital space capsule to land on American soil. Using a parachute and airbag system, which is designed to absorb shock impacts, the capsule ends its journey on land at one of Starliner's landing sites in the continental United States. A pair of drogue chutes are deployed at about 9 kilometers in altitude, followed by a trio of main chutes at 3.6 kilometers. At 1.5 kilometers in altitude, the heat shield is ditched and the six airbags are inflated. These airbags serve a dual purpose. In nominal use cases, the airbags will soften the landing when landing on land, and in off-nominal cases like an abort or an emergency re-entry, the airbags offer buoyancy and balance for water landings. Unlike splashing down on water, which is considered the Dragon's only ability, touching down on land will allow the Starliner an easy path to refurbishment and reusability. While each water landing is more expensive and saltwater adds some complexity to refurbishment, refurbishing the capsule for reuse, this decision avoided a lot of costs in designing and certifying this new capability. Boeing hoped to be able to turn one around in just six months and reuse it up to ten times. That's definitely a good thing. Since the crew will land on solid ground, recovery of the crew is quite different than a splashdown. On the edge of the landing zone, there'll be a mobile data tracking vehicle, or MDTV, as well as a mobile landing control center, or MLCC, as well as a host of recovery vehicles waiting to pounce. One more thing is when returning to Earth after its second orbital flight test in May 2022, Starliner made an impressive with its cleanness. This is totally opposite to the burned appearance of many other capsules such as SpaceX Dragon, NASA's Apollo capsules that return from the moon, and the hundreds of Soyuz capsules. Boeing's secret is on a non-ablative material for the back shell of its spacecraft. The use of this material is a trade-off. Unlike Boeing, SpaceX prefers an ablative covering that looks like a composite material. During re-entry, it will heat up later breakdown and finally release gas. It provides a porous carbon matrix acting as a protective layer. To make it simple, you can understand that it works by heating part of the material itself into gas and burning away, thus moving the heat buildup away from the capsule. Non-ablative heat shields don't break down at the same time, meaning they're easy to reuse, but they are heavier because they are thicker and they are also harder to work with. Another disadvantage is that they would lose tiles and break them all the time. To handle this, Boeing uses the ablative heat shield for the main area where it gets the most heating and uses the non-ablative one on the back shell that contacts less heat. Being lighter and simpler are the main 
main drivers for SpaceX to select ablative material for Dragon's heat shield. There are two main sections to SpaceX's Dragon capsule thermal protection system, the back shell and the primary heat shield. The primary heat shield uses a proprietary material called PICA-X, an iteration of NASA's PICA. PICA stands for Phenolic Impregnated Carbon Ablator, and that ablator is the key part of it. Pika-X is a strong, durable, and even reusable heat shielding. Most importantly, it's a monolithic one-piece shield. Thermal protection tiles such as a thermal soak heat shield used on the space shuttle were designed to be reusable but required hours of maintenance and were also quite fragile and sensitive to damage. Additionally, the company uses SPAM, SpaceX proprietary ablative material, is used on most of the back shell. After a crew or cargo dragon returns from space, both SPAM and Pika-X are removed from the spacecraft and replaced. Last but not least, it's about the ability to reboost to ISS. A reboost is the process of boosting the altitude of an artificial satellite in low Earth orbit in order to delay its atmospheric re-entry due to orbital decay. There is a lot of information discussing why Starliner can surpass Dragon at this point. CST-100 has four 39,700-pound thrust launch aboard engines, 24 orbital maneuvering and attitude control thrusters, 1,500 pounds of thrust each for launch aboard attitude control, stage separation functions, large orbital maneuvers. Also are included 28 reaction control system engines, RCS each of them with a 100-pound thrust using similar technology to other engines in CSTE-100. Our CSE's role is to reboost the ISS. Let's say that even the above engines, the bigger ones, could be used sometimes to help reboosting faster the ISS if there is enough fuel in their respective tanks. But with or without them, the RCS can accomplish the reboosting procedure for ISS. SpaceX Dragon spacecraft, including the Crew Dragon, is not equipped with thrusters designed for reboosting the ISS. Its primary function is to transport crew and cargo to and from the ISS safely. Reboosting operations are typically handled by the Russian Soyuz spacecraft or Progress spacecraft, which are specifically designed for such tasks. SpaceX's contribution to ISS operations lies more in cargo resupply missions and crew transport, rather than station keeping or reboosting operations. In short, with the larger funding and advancing technology, both Boeing should have been able to beat any unicorn in the race to launch NASA astronauts. However, SpaceX's successful launch in May 2020 was like throwing cold water on Boeing fans who had criticized Elon Musk's rocket company. It seems unprecedented for a new face in the rocket field to leave a company with a 100-year history to play catch-up. So far, SpaceX Crew Dragon has successfully named itself in the NASA's top priority list for the commercial crew program, meaning that currently, it is the only U.S. human-rated orbital transport spacecraft. Not only that, what Dragon has done for four past years even inspired space unicorns to participate in the spaceflight market. Sierra Space with its future Dream Chaser spacecraft, for example. On the other hand, what Boeing Starliner has shown the world is just a shame. So far, Boeing has only impressed fans with a successful 2022 mission and its never-ending tale of delays. And even in the firm's advantage area, the airline has also been falling into a series of scandals. All of these seem to signal that its era has come to an end. Perhaps, one day, its fate would resemble the space shuttle program getting retired and paving the way for better players. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. If you want to explore more aspects of the world's most powerful rockets and the world of rockets in general, here is a selection of deeper dive videos for you. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.